Welcome back to Classic Gaming Quarterly Let's Read, where today we're taking a look at Electronic Gaming Monthly, Volume 6, Issue 6, from June of 1993. <laughs> Now, 1993 was sort of the zenith of the 16-bit console wars, and at this time it was a great time to be a gamer. You had the NES still being supported, the Genesis had been out for almost four years, Super Nintendo had been out for almost two years, Sega CD was out, the Turbo Graphics and Turbo Duo were still being supported, and you also had three handheld systems all vying for a piece of the market, the Game Boy, the Game Gear, and the Lynx. As you can see, the cover story here is Mortal Kombat, which was coming out for home consoles for the first time. It was going to be on the Super Nintendo, Genesis, Game Boy, and Game Gear. So you can see on the first page we have an ad for Batman Returns. And when I think of hidden gems for a console or underappreciated games, uh, I think of a game like Batman Returns. When people talk about the best beat-em-ups for home consoles back in the 16-bit era, the conversation always seems to come down to Streets of Rage versus Final Fight. And Batman Returns is an awesome beat-em-up game. Uh, please don't confuse it with the Sega CD and Genesis versions, which are completely different games. This is an awesome game, and you can pick it up fairly cheap because people probably just think it's more movie-licensed drivel, and they ignore it. But uh, if you're into Super Nintendo at all, you should really grab a copy of this game. Sega on sale here at uh, Software Etc. You can see uh, this is actually the exact Sega bundle that I got, although I got it a year before this magazine came out. This is the Sonic the Hedgehog bundle with the Model 1 Genesis, and that's the exact box that I had. You'll see they also had available the Sega Genesis fighting system, which came with Streets of Rage 2. And if you've watched my Streets of Rage retrospective video, there's actually a commercial for this exact bundle, sort of at the right at the beginning of the video, you can see they also have a uh, Sonic Sonic 2 Game Gear bundle for 129, or for 149, you could get a Game Gear Super Sonic Sports Pack, which gave you uh, Majors Pro Baseball and Sonic 2 along with the Game Gear. I personally was never a fan uh, of the Game Gear. I actually almost bought a Game Gear when I was a kid, and I, I went to Good Guys to pick it up, and they were out. And I ended up not getting a Game Gear, and I'm so glad I didn't, because I think I would have been horribly disappointed. So here's a nice big ad for software, etc. Uh, back then. You can see they don't actually put the price of anything, which is sort of annoying. But they just put, well, $3 off or, or $5 off, but $5 off of what? So, um, But it's, it's just kind of cool to see like what kind of stuff was out at any given time. I think the great thing about magazines is that this is a snapshot of what was going on in gaming in you know May of 1993 you know when this when this issue is sitting on newsstands you can see uh, even back then they were trying to get you to reserve your copy of a game here Street Fighter 2 Championship Edition is getting ready to come out for Genesis I think that came out in around September and so they want you to go in there and already re reserve your game you can also see some of the interesting uh, accessories that were out uh, there's the ASCII pad SG that's a pretty decent control pad uh, this cool uh, Genesis Video Game Center. That's the kind of thing I like to find these days if I find something like that at a thrift store. It's fun to keep your games in uh, in stuff like that. Letters to the editor. Uh, here's an interesting ad for Mario is Missing for the Super Nintendo. And I think this ad is interesting because there's nothing about it that suggests that this is a kid's game, which is what it was. You might not know any better and read this magazine thinking, oh, a new Mario game's coming out, but this is actually meant for, for children. Um, so if you bought that, you might end up disappointed and, and hoping to return it. Somebody's complaining that they can't use uh, their Game Genie with Star Fox. Uh, just don't cheat, dude. EGM envelope art. This was kind of cool. Um, I used to read Mad Magazine a lot when I was a kid, and they would do something similar, where if you, uh, if you were sending a letter into the editor, you know, people would do these intricate drawings on the envelope, and if it was good enough, then you might make it into the magazine. And so here, you can see all winners get a free in-your-face t-shirt. So everybody that got their, their envelope in the magazine got a free t-shirt. And first prize, which is whoever drew this one, Curtis James from Rialto, California, he actually won this really sweet uh, fire stick 
which is a, a home joystick, and it looks like a really good joystick. I can see, even though the picture is tiny, I can see that those are all actual arcade parts. Doesn't really say what system that's for, but um, that's a definite step up over um, over the sort of off the shelf arcade sticks that you could buy uh, at the time. Cool Spot, you know, I've never really played Cool Spot. I, I hear that it's a pretty good game. I've always just sort of dismissed it as a Seven Up commercial, sort of sort of like Yo Noid was a Domino's Pizza commercial. But apparently, this is actually a decent platform game. Uh, I haven't played it, so I wouldn't know. Um, before I get to the review crew, I'll just quickly point out this Road Avenger ad. Uh, that was a Sega CD game. It was a full motion video game that kind of had similar gameplay to Dragon's Lair in that you weren't really interacting to a degree that you would normally interact with a video game. This was more like you were watching the driving happen and then you'd suddenly have to like press right or left to to avoid getting into an accident or something. But other than that, you weren't actually driving. So the way EGM did reviews is they had four people that would review all the games. And so for each game, there'd be a little synopsis of what the game was about. And then each of the four reviewers would just type out a few sentences, summarizing their feelings on the game, and then giving the game a score on a scale of 1 to 10. And in this issue, the the four reviewers are Steve Harris, who was the editor-in-chief and sort of creator of EGM, Ed Semrad, Martin Alessi, and Sushi X. Sushi X was the pseudonym of sort of whoever wanted to do the fourth position of the review crew at any given time. So there were a lot of different writers at EGM who um, would be Sushi X. So um, obviously Sushi X is not a real person, but it also wasn't always the same person. Here's an ad for Lords of Thunder for the Turbo Duo sort of late in its life and this is definitely the summer of 93 is really towards the end I, I believe that they stopped supporting the system in the spring of 94 but certainly late in its life there they actually did spend quite a bit on advertising and I think this is probably the first of several ads we're going to see in this magazine for uh, turbo either the turbo itself or or turbo games this is sort of a continuation of the ad from the previous page uh, you can see it, uh, Lords of Thunder free video giveaway. So you could clip out the slip and fill it out, and they'd send you a, a VHS tape that I actually have. And all it really is is a video preview of the game trying to get you to want to buy it, and it's pretty cool. And I just realized that I actually skipped a review that we should check out. Uh, this is the review for Star Fox, which had just come out for the Super Nintendo. And see, they're talking about, oh, it's the Super FX chip, makes a big hit with Star Fox. And, uh, you know, everybody gave it a 9 except for Ed, which I think is interesting. Ed's complaint is basically that the graphics are plain. Um, I don't know what else one would expect. It has flat-shaded polygons, but if I was going to find something to knock it for, it wouldn't be the plain graphics. Because for the time, the graphics were, were really good, and that was better than anything that the Genesis was doing, maybe up until Virtua Racer, or Virtua Racing. Uh, next page, there's RBI Baseball 93. I think when people think RBI Baseball, they think more of the NES, but uh, RBI Baseball had several games on the Genesis. And Cyborg Justice. Cyborg Justice was a game that I bought for the Genesis maybe five or six years ago. I think I found like a loose cartridge of it for like $1 or $2, and I'd never actually heard of it, and I bought it because it just sounded really cool. And, I mean, Cyborg Justice, you know, that... That's that sounds badass, and I uh, I popped it in, and and it's it's a pretty average to below average side scrolling beat 'em up game. It's pretty boring, um, which is unfortunate. That you take an awesome name like Cyborg Justice and and waste it on kind of kind of crappy gameplay. So this is kind of what I was talking about with these off the shelf arcade sticks. This is the uh, Super Nintendo Super Advantage, and certainly they did not recreate something that was like ripping out the control panel of an arcade game. So here's a two-page ad for RBI Baseball 93. This is the kind of situation that I think would make people call the uh, objectivity of game journalists into question, only because here's a gigantic two-page ad, and there's a review for the same game. And it makes you wonder, was this game really so good that it got two eights and two sevens, or is it maybe more of a six, but they paid for a giant ad on the next page? So I, I don't know. I've played this game, and I didn't think it was that great, but maybe 
maybe at that time it was great. The Genesis really didn't have a lot of great baseball games, in my opinion. It had Sports Talk Baseball and then a bunch of stuff that wasn't as good as Sports Talk Baseball. Uh, there's Batman Returns, but that's Batman Returns for the Sega CD, which I'm personally not a big fan of. You can see you got a 5754, so they didn't think that much of it either. Uh, that is, again, not Batman for Super Nintendo, which is awesome. Right next to it is Final Fight CD, which uh, is the much better, in my opinion, of the two, the two home ports of Final Fight. And I'm kind of surprised to see two of the reviewers, uh, Steve and Ed, gave it a 6. And both of them seem to be... Their primary complaint is that, well, this game didn't need to be on CD. And if you've ever played the arcade version of Final Fight and then played the CD version, it's got a completely different soundtrack that they would not have been able to do on a cartridge. If it had been on a cartridge, it probably would have just been a, a you know, somewhat scaled-down version of the arcade soundtrack. So I think back then there was this expectation that if something was coming out on the CD system, it needed to somehow be better aside from just the audio quality than than a, a cartridge game and it just wasn't really going to happen in most cases. Over here, here's another ad for a Turbo turbo CD, Turbo Duo game. This one is uh, Exile from Working Designs. And right on the next page, here's another uh, Turbo CD game localized by Working Designs, and that's Bastille. Uh, there's a Bonk 3 review for the for the duo that came out on uh, Hue Card and on CD. They don't actually say which version they're reviewing. I don't know if one came out at a different time or or what. And then here, interestingly, so again, this is the summer of 93 and the 16-bit era is in full swing. But there were still really good games coming out for the 8-bit Nintendo. And so here they're reviewing Kirby's Adventure, which they give the Editor's Choice Gold Award which couldn't be any smaller. Um, you can see it gets a 3 eights and a 9, and it, it's well-deserved. Kirby's Adventure was a great game, and I think it's probably a shame that more gamers didn't play it back then because they were too busy playing their 16-bit consoles. And here is... These are the games that uh, are coming out, sort of coming soon. Like, this is not a, a preview section, but really just a little rundown of here are the games that are coming out. So, you know, if there's a game on here that you've been waiting for a while, they're telling you, okay, it's coming out, so maybe you want to start calling Electronics Boutique or Software Etc. or Toys R Us and, and finding out, like, has it come out yet? Uh, back then, they didn't have hard street dates for games, so if you were waiting for a game to come out, sometimes what you had to do was just keep calling the store over and over again, and finally, oh, yeah, yeah, it's here, come get it, whatever. And um, so there's, like, bubble... Bubble Bobble 2 for Nintendo, which has become sort of a sought-after game because it, you know, a lot of these later Nintendo titles they didn't they didn't manufacture too many of them, so they they're a little bit more rare. For Super Nintendo, there's uh, Yoshi Cookie, Final Fight 2, Mighty Final Fight, Shadow Run, and uh, Super Turrican is actually one of my favorite Super Nintendo games. It uh, just as a little quick aside, it doesn't run properly on a Super Nintendo Mini. Like, you might start playing it, it seems fine, but it'll hang up at some point. On the Genesis side, Street Fighter II Championship Edition was, without a doubt, the biggest release that was pending. Uh, again, that, that wasn't scheduled, I think, to come out until September. I'm not really sure when it actually came out. Uh, and then a bunch of CD games. Uh, like, there's uh, Robo Aleste, I just bought that myself. And uh, Terminator CD is an awesome game um, for the Sega CD. It's a, a side-scrolling uh, action platformer or run-and-gun type game where you take on the role of... Uh, uh, I forgot John Connor's dad's name, the guy that came back in time in the first Terminator to kill Arnold Schwarzenegger, but that that's uh, who you play as. EGM's Top Tens. So it's kind of funny that they call this EGM's Top Tens because it's actually Babbage's Top Tens. These are just uh, sales charts. And it says here, information above is provided by Babbage's and is current as of April 12, 1993. So basically, these were the top-selling games for each system in uh, um, March, April of 93. And so, like, for Nintendo, again, Nintendo sort of at the end of its life, Te uh, Tecmo NBA Basketball was actually the hot seller. That was number one, and Dragon Warrior 4 was kind of surprisingly number two. And then below that, you actually see a lot of the classic Nintendo games, like Super Mario Bros. 2, Super Mario Bros. 3, Tetris, Dr. Mario, Zelda Adventures of Link. And I would suspect that that's probably because there there was a price drop on the Nintendo, and a lot of new people were buying the system and buying up sort of those classic games. 
for the Super Nintendo, you have uh, Star Fox, Street Fighter 2, Super Mario Kart, uh, no surprises there, Zelda Adventures of Link, uh, Genesis, X-Men, Tony La Russa Baseball, that's a terrible game, I hated that game. Uh, a lot of sports titles, they kind of live up to the uh, reputation that the Genesis was a sports gamer's machine. Flashback from U.S. Gold was an awesome cartridge, I rented that when it came out. Echo the Dolphin. Sega CD, kind of surprised to see that the uh, top-selling game was The Adventures of Willie Beamish. But uh, right below it, Road Avenger, I already said what I thought about that one. And then uh, Night Trap was number three, Sewer Shark number four. Game Boy, Super Mario Land 2, Super Mario Land were the top two. Tetris is on here, which is kind of kind of weird. I guess maybe by then they were selling a Game Boy that did not come bundled with Tetris. Not really sure. And then uh, Game Gear, Sonic the Hedgehog 2 was the number one. Streets of Rage number three, that's kind of cool. So on this page we have uh, Reader's Top 10s and then Top 10 Baddest Sci-Fi Shooters, which, I mean, whatever, whatever that means. Um, but what's kind of interesting about this is that they actually had a 1-900 line set up where you'd pay a dollar per minute just to call in and type in the, the corresponding number of whatever game you thought was awesome. And then they would use that to make this reader's top 10 list. And I just don't understand why anybody would want to pay the dollar per minute. And then down here they have the editor's favorite picks. And Star Fox is on the top of the list. And they have um, Street Fighter 2 Championship Edition, but the Turbo Duo uh, version. And I don't know if that time at that time they were expecting it to come out in this country. It even says prototypes are in red, so they're saying that that was a prototype. So they may have been expecting that that was going to be released on the American Turbo Duo, which of course it wasn't. Uh, again, flashback, like I said, I rented this when it came out. It's a really cool game if you've played uh, Out of This World, also known as Another World, on PC, or really Prince of Persia. It's, it's sort of it's the same concept. And then later, uh, like Odd World, Abe's Odyssey, and Abe's Exodus also played like this. Uh, they called it the first CD-ROM game in a cartridge, and it really kind of had that feel. It had a lot of these cutscenes, these CG cutscenes or full motion video style cutscenes. I guess it's not full motion video because it's animated, but um, it just sort of seemed like the, like a big game just to be on a cartridge. And I think it was actually a 12 meg cartridge, so. Um, that's part of the reason, I guess, why. Uh, gaming gossip. So this was um, this was a mainstay in EGM for a long time, and it was written by Quarterman, which, again, Quarterman was the pseudonym of whoever was writing this column at the time. I think there were a few different people uh, over the course of the years who played the role of Quarterman. But, you know, it was basically just uh, scuttlebutt from the gaming industry. Um, some of it was true, some of it wasn't, or some of it was just a temporary thing, like down here... Uh, Neo Geo has officially put their CD-ROM peripheral on hold, but as we know, as we all know now, the uh, CD, Neo CD did end up coming out. Uh, EGM Express, so this is just sort of a new section. Uh, Turbo Street Fighter 2 Championship Edition coming to Nintendo, which of course it did. Capcom had a really good relationship with Nintendo, and that's why Nintendo had the game exclusively for a while, and that's probably why they got more iterations of the game. And then down here they have this little blurb about play NES games on your Super NES. That's kind of interesting because it was sort of controversial when the Super Nintendo came out that it was not backwards compatible with the Nintendo, uh, the original Nintendo. And then as you know, they never released any kind of official accessory to even allow you to play Nintendo games on it like, uh, like Sega did with the um, power base converter. And so there were a few different companies third-party com companies that made sort of these unlicensed peripherals that would let you play Nintendo games on your Super Nintendo. Here's a Hudson Hudson Soft ad for their Game Boy and Super Nintendo offerings. Um, See, so don't smile when they say you're grounded. Uh, I, I wasn't allowed to play Nintendo games or, or play anything when I was grounded, but um, or, you know, sent to my room. But this kid's got a pretty cool setup. He's got a pretty nice TV there. That's a pretty cool retro-looking phone. And one thing about this ad that stands out to me a little bit is that for some reason he has Super Famicom controllers hooked up to his American Super Nintendo. So I'm guessing that this ad was probably made in Japan, but it's interesting that they had a Super Nintendo, but they didn't have the proper controllers to go with it. Um, well, here's another big ad for the Turbo Duo. And like I said, maybe this was all just too little too late. Um, but, you know, so by now the Turbo Duo has come out, and here's just sort of a stack showing all these great games that were out for it, and uh, sort of touting the uh, the capabilities of, of CD systems. 
and telling you how you're going to get uh, $250 worth of free games when you spend $299 and buy this system. Because they're telling you it comes free with Gate of Thunder, Bonk's Adventure, Bonk's Revenge, uh, Ease 1 and 2, and, uh, well, that's it. But, I mean, that's five That's five games just buying the system. Like, you could literally just walk into a store, buy the system, go home, and have, like, you know, probably the better part of 100 hours worth of uh worth of gameplay uh, games just go home with without having to spend any more money than that. And over here they're showing the Mega Drive 2 and the Mega CD 2, which had just been released in Japan. Um, you know, now people look down on the Model 2 Genesis as being inferior to the original, myself included, but that's only because I had the original Genesis and that's the one that I like, but you can see back then it was kind of cool, you know, that they were showing like, oh, it's being redesigned and check it out. And then even down here you can see they're showing how it would work if you have an original Genesis, but you hook it up to a Model 2 Sega CD, and you have to have that little extender piece. Here is yet another ad, Turbo Duo ad. This one is for Bomberman 93, and it's telling you that if you buy Bom Bomberman 93 and then cut out this slip, they will send you a free Turbo Tap. Freaking awesome. That's exactly how I would describe Super Turrican, and um, I think I kind of already did. So this is an awesome game. If you don't have it, you should get it and you should play it if you like Turrican. If you, even if you don't, if you've played the first Turrican, the first Turrican's pretty rough. So don't judge the rest of the series on the first one. I like the first one, but Super Turrican is, is way better. And of course, uh, uh, Gun Lord, sort of the spiritual successor to Turrican on the Neo Geo and Sega Dreamcast is also sweet. Over here, International Outlooks, they're, they're talking about games that have come out in Japan. So here's our type 3 for the Super Famicom, which of course did later come out for the Super Nintendo. Gunstar Heroes for the Genesis. I'm not sure when that came out for the Genesis in this country, but here it's already out for the Mega Drive in Japan. Eliminate Down for the Mega Drive. That's a game that will now run you quite the pretty penny. That was never released here. Uh, it's a, you know, a shooter for the uh, Japanese Mega Drive. Yet another duo ad for uh, Dungeon Master Theron's Quest. Tricks of the Trade, so this is just like uh, level codes and uh, different kinds of tricks for playing games. Uh, there's no point really going through those. Here's a Tengen ad for uh, Game Gear. Yep, only Game Gear. Marble Madness. Here's uh, these were these were very common in old game magazines. So this one this is from Chips and Bits, but there were lots of companies that would advertise in these magazines, and it's basically a mail order house for um, video games, and they were generally a little bit cheaper than buying them at the store. But of course, then you had to pay shipping. Mecha Robot Golf. I've never actually heard of that game, but that seems like the kind of thing I would play. Seems like they took the uh, 2020 Super Baseball formula and tried to apply it to golf. I'll have to check that out. Uh, Terminator 2 Judgment Day for Super Nintendo. Uh, and of course, here's the uh, cover story on Mortal Kombat. I was never a fan of Mortal Kombat, only because I was a, uh, I was a Street Fighter 2 guy. So, But certainly this was a huge release, and there was actually quite a bit of controversy about Mortal Kombat when it came out, because the Super Nintendo version was censored and didn't have blood. And a lot of people wrote angry letters to Nintendo because it was one thing if you were a kid, but if you were, you know, like a, you know, late teens or an adult and you were buying these games, you know, you didn't want them censored and you didn't want to be treated like a baby, you know. And it probably helped Sega a lot that Genesis or that, that Nintendo was doing that in the early days and eventually they did stop. And so a lot of the later releases on the Super Nintendo are a lot more uh, mature or, or violent or whatever. They're not, they're not so sterilized like the early ones were. And here they're... Uh, having a um, contest where you can win a Mortal Kombat uh, arcade machine. That'd be pretty sweet. And then here's um, a write-up on Street Fighter II Champion Edition for the Turbo Duo slash PC Engine. And unfortunately, that, of course, never... They even reviewed it and gave it a 9. And sadly, that was never released in this country. I, I really don't know why that... That might have really helped the Turbo Duo, although it probably would have helped more if they had been able to release it before Street Fighter II came out on the Super Nintendo. Uh, here's a preview of Super Empire Strikes Back, so at this point only Super Star Wars had come out. The other two games had not yet come out. Uh, Final Fight 2 for the Super Nintendo. Um, I've never actually played Final Fight 2, but certainly from these pictures it looks badass and I probably should play it. Rock and Roll Racing is a really cool game, sort of the spiritual successor to RC Pro-Am uh, in, in pseudo 3D 
on Super Nintendo, and I think it also, I'm pretty sure it also came out on the Genesis. Total Carnage was a pretty sweet game for the Super Nintendo. It was a um, sort of like Akari Warriors or Shock Troopers, like an overhead, overhead shooter. There's Super Baseball 2020 for the Super Nintendo. Uh, awesome classic game for the for the Neo Geo, and made a pretty it was a pretty good tran transition to the Genesis and the Super Nintendo. Um, if you don't want to buy a Neo Geo, certainly uh, those are respectable ports. Final Fight CD, it's the best home version of the game you're going to get. You know, if you don't have a way to play arcade boards at home, uh, Final Fight CD, in my opinion, is better than the Super Nintendo version. Robo Aleste, uh, awesome classic vertically scrolling shooter for the Sega CD. Terminator for the Sega CD, as I already said, that's another that's another classic. Uh, Batman Returns, not a fan. Uh, it's got these 3D driving levels where you're sort of playing like road blasters, but then it also has side-scrolling platform levels that are that are not very good. Here's uh, Kirby's Adventure for the Nintendo. I mean, again, here's the here's a preview, and then they also reviewed it, so I don't know. I don't know what's going on with that, but uh, again, Kirby's Adventure was a really cool game for the Nintendo. I mean, it has kind of a little bit of a kiddie look to it, but it's definitely solid platforming action. And the way he uh, sucks up enemies and then digests them, I guess, and then gets uh, uh, additional powers out of that is a cool uh, and unique gameplay mechanic at the time. Super Turrican for the Nintendo. I've never played, actually, the Nintendo version of Super Turk and only the Super Nintendo version, so I, I don't know if this one's good or not, but it actually looks a lot more like the original Turrican, so I'd be kind of curious to check that out just as a curiosity. Was EGM Lifestyles was kind of like this section of the magazine that was not about games directly, like this is an article about, uh, I forgot what it was called, but you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger had this thing he was doing, trying to get kids to exercise, and then Here's a little piece on Jurassic Park. Here's another one of these uh, ads I was talking about. This one's actually for BRE Software, which is was in my hometown, so I actually went to their brick and mortar store. And you can see, or you probably can't see because it's in tiny print, but they would actually list not only the price they sold their games for, but the price they bought them for. And the idea was that you would box up whatever games you didn't want where you thought they were giving a good enough price and you would send them in, and then generally you'd, you'd, you'd trade them in for different games. Uh, this is a little section, uh, last minute update, so this is maybe sort of information they got in after the layout of the magazine had already been completed, but they wanted to just get it in there. You know, again, I know I keep saying this over and over again, but back then, magazines is where you got all your information from, and so if they got some little extra piece of information they could throw in the back of the magazine, then they were going to do it. So uh, like this was announcing that John Madden Duo CD Football is coming out for the Turbo Duo. Uh, I actually did a video review of that one, I think, last year. And then probably the biggest news here is they're calling it Super Mario Collection, but that, of course, is Super Mario All-Stars for the Super Nintendo. And, um, you know, I'd be curious to read, like, a review of that. You know, I, I didn't have a Super Nintendo back then, and I'd be curious to know what the, re the response to something like this was, because now I feel like people would say, oh, it's just Nintendo trying to cash in and get me to repay for games that I already paid for. But I mean, Super Mario All-Stars is such a badass cartridge to get four games on one cartridge. And yeah, they were Nintendo games, but they were all totally, the graphics were all redone. And, you know, 50 or 60 bucks for, for four full games, because of course it came with uh, the Japanese version of Super Mario Brothers 2. To get all four of those games on one cartridge is just an awesome deal. And then here's uh, uh, an ad for Mega Play, which was a magazine that was published by the publishers of EGM that was dedicated to Sega systems. And I actually have a bunch of issues of Mega Play, so maybe I'll do one of those on a future episode of, uh, of Let's Read. And then on the back is Cool World, uh, starring Holly Hollywood. Uh, I never saw that. I never saw the movie, and then here's the game, and uh, never played that either. But um, that is Electronic Gaming Monthly from June of 1993. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.